Hi, it's Mark from Embedded Pro and I'm back with another video in my series all about the OKDo E1 microcontroller board. Here's the board and it features the NXP LPC55S69 microcontroller. Today what I'll show you is how to use the clocks configuration tool in MCU Expresso to develop clock initializations for this particular board. So as always, Let's turn to MCU Expresso and get started. Well, here's a neat little example. We know that the LPC 55S69 has got a user USB port. So let's go and test that out with one of the SDK examples. I'm going to import another SDK example, again, based upon the LPC Expresso 55S69 board. Next. And this time I want a USB example. I want the LPC 55S69 to be a USB mouse. So that would be a device class. And scrolling through the list, I can see a USB device HID mouse based upon free RTOS. I think we'll select that one next and finish the project. MCU Expresso IDE imports the project into the develop perspective. And here it is in the Project Explorer. Well, I have the HID Mouse Free RTOS project open in MCU Expresso, and let's look at the source code and see how the clock configuration is treated. I've got mouse.c open. I can use the outline view to find the main. And here we see at line 654, the clock setup. It's calling a function board boot clock PLL 150 megahertz. Well, in an SDK project, generally the PLL 150 megahertz clock configuration has a reference clock from a 16 megahertz crystal. We can see that if we go to the clock configuration tool. Well, this is the clocks tool inside MCU Expresso IDE, and it gives us one central place to investigate all of the clocks and all of the clock settings for our project. I find it most helpful to switch to the clocks diagram. And this is a view of the clocks tree for the microcontroller, in this case, the LPC 55S69. And all of the internal clocks and the multiplexers and the dividers and all of the clocks that are needed for the peripherals are all shown here in this clocks diagram. Using this tool, we're able to generate functions that will configure the clocks in particular ways for our project. And NXP have provided four very useful predefined functions that may be of use to us. We can see them here in the functional groups. And there's a clock configuration board boot clock free running oscillator 12M. And this is a very simple clock configuration that just uses the internal 12 megahertz free running oscillator. That's a relaxation oscillator on chip to generate a 12 megahertz clock for the core. There's another functional group named board boot clock free running oscillator high frequency 96 megahertz. This is very similar to the previous one this time using the 96 megahertz relaxation oscillator inside the chip to generate clocks for the system. For boards fitted with an external crystal, we can use the PLL 100 and PLL 150 megahertz configurations. This functional group PLL 100 uses the external crystal to generate a 16 megahertz clock named clock in and this is fed through this multiplexer into the PLL. The PLL has been configured to generate a 100 megahertz output clock for the core and the peripherals. And lastly, the board boot clock PLL 150M also takes an input from the 16 megahertz crystal, generates a clock called clock in, and then this is passed through this multiplexer onto the PLL to make 
a 150 megahertz reference clock for the microcontroller. Note that the OKDo E1 board does not have an external 16 megahertz crystal. And if you try and select either of these functional groups, it's expecting a signal to be applied to the PLL and we'll find that the PLL doesn't lock because there's no 16 megahertz reference. What we see in practice is that the board hangs at startup and never gets into main. Well, how can we create our own functional group for the OKDo E1 board that uses the internal free running oscillator as a reference for the PLL? Well, I can generate a new functional group and I use this dialog just here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a new functional group with this add button here. It asks me to give the functional group a name and I'm gonna call it board underscore boot clock free running oscillator 12 PLL 150 megahertz. So we generate a function in C with this name and it's going to configure the clocks in the way I'm just about to show you. We're going to be using the PLL so I need to have the PLL in normal mode and we can say OK. okay. So now we've got this functional group selected. And I just now need to enable each of the features for this functional group. The configuration starts with the free running oscillator 12 megahertz active and driving the system clock. But we want to enable the PLL and we're going to use the 12 megahertz reference clock for the PLL. Now I want to generate a 150 megahertz clock from the PLL and I can do that with, uh, I want to divide by eight and times by 200. So that generates a 300 megahertz output from the PLL. Let's put it through the post divider, divide by two. And this now generates a frequency F out of 150 megahertz. Let's put that through the main clock selector B. So we just set the input for this MUX to be the PLL zero clock. And now through the MUX, the system clock and the trace clock and the system tick divider and the sys tick divided one are all clocked from 150 megahertz. I always find that it's helpful to look at the clock and measure it on a scope. So as I always show you, I'm going to select the main clock in this MUX here. That's 150 megahertz. Now 150 megahertz is a bit high for my scope and for the pad. So let me divide that by 200 to make a lower frequency that I can measure on the scope. We should see a 750 kilohertz clock frequency on the clock out pin. So there we have it. This is the clocks configuration tool, creating a new functional group, which initializes the PLL with a 12 megahertz reference to make a 150 megahertz output clock. Just for simplicity, I'm gonna copy that function name and then update the code. Now we've generated an output function. Here it is, it's board boot clock, free running oscillator 12, PLL 150 megahertz. And here we see at line 337 that we're attaching the clock, free running oscillator 12 megahertz to the PLL zero. So I'm sure that this is gonna configure the clocks in the way that we want for the OKDo E1 board. The final thing that I need to do is just call the function that we created from the main. This is in mouse.c. Here we are at main and in this function call here, I'm just going to call the function that we created.
that's all we need to do. Let's select the project and build it. There we have the project built. I'm just going to connect up my OKDo OK E1 board, connected it through the debugger and run a debug session. This is just to program the board with the flash image. We find the probe and just like before we'll find the two cores, core zero and core one, projects built for core zero, okay. And now the microcontroller will be flashed and the ELF file loaded into the debugger. The code is run up to main and just to check the code, we're just going to step over these first few functions, going to initialize the pins, and this is the function call which will configure the clocks. Everything appears to run OK. So now let me stop the debugger and connect the microcontroller through its USB user port. I'm just connecting that now. And what we see is the application is now running on the board. We're connected through the USB user port and the code running on the LPC 55 S69 is implementing this mouse function. It's a very, very annoying square pattern that really stops us from using the mouse because we can't click on a button. But what that does do is demonstrate that the SDK contains a full HID mouse device which runs on the OKDo OK one board. Let me disconnect that to regain some control. So there we have it. That's me running the OKDo OK E1 board with a PLL setting that enables it to run without an external crystal. Well, that's all for today. And if you enjoy these videos, you can support me by sharing them, by liking them, and subscribing to my YouTube channel. That's all for now. Thank you. Goodbye.